In our blog post on January 4th, Borders Circles the Drain, we wrote about how Borders Group, a major bookseller in the U.S., was on the brink of failure. Borders has over $350 million in bank debt outstanding. What if you were one of those lenders? Could you have seen the company's problems coming in time to protect your firm? Usually, there's some warning when a storm is coming. That's as true in finance as it is with the weather. So here's our list of the top six early warning signs of financial distress. One, falling revenues. Two, growing losses. Three, increasing working capital. Four, rising debt. Five, decreasing liquidity. And six, struggling management. In this blog post, we'll talk about the first three and see how they apply to borders. Falling revenues. Borders revenues have been falling for some time. They were down 8% in the fiscal year ending in January 2009, 14% in the fiscal year ending in January 2010, and 15% for the nine months ending in October 2010. The cause was not shrinking demand for books. Book sales were basically stable between 2007 and 2010. The cause was an increase in competition. In the rivalry between in-store retailers like Borders and Barnes and & Noble and online retailers like Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com, the online retailers have been winning for some time. And recently, Substitute products in the form of e-readers like the Kindle and the Nook have begun taking share away from the conventional retailers as well. Growing losses is our next early warning sign, and you can see Borders operating income getting worse and worse over the last four years. The main reason is stubborn operating costs, especially occupancy costs. Borders just hasn't been able to cut costs as fast as sales have declined. The next early warning sign is increasing working capital. In many troubled companies, accounts receivable and inventories build up while payables run off. The result is a drain on cash and lower cash flows from operating activities. But Borders actually cut working capital days from 65 in 2007 to 46 in 2009 driving cash flow higher and higher. Working capital efficiencies offset the company's revenue and cost problems. That didn't work so well for Borders in 2010, when working capital gains were not enough to make up for the company's operating losses and cash flow from operating activities fell to $57 million. In some ways, in fact, Borders was less efficient with working capital in 2010 than in the years before. Day's inventory increased from 103 to 114 as the company struggled to adjust stocking levels to the accelerating decline in its sales. Borders offset some of the increase in inventory with an increase in days payable from 39 days to 46 days, but that only increased its reliance on confidence-sensitive short-term trade financing and made the company more likely to start circling the drain. Early warning signs can be a powerful tool for you in credit analysis and debt structuring. They can help you take action to reduce your exposures, improve your collateral, and increase your returns. The first three, falling revenues, growing losses, and increasing working capital, work well in the borders case. In our next blog post, we'll continue to analyze borders and see how effective the next three are, rising debt, decreasing liquidity, and struggling management.